All right, so having done limits, we can look at continuity. Um, and, and the definition is sort of exactly what you might expect. All right, so R of t, um, again, it's a vector-valued function, is continuous at some point, say, t naught, if the limit as t goes to t naught of r of t is equal to r of t naught. All right, um, but if you think about what that means for a second in the context of this previous theorem on limits, right? Well, uh, we know that we can take the limit sort of component-wise. We know we can write r of t naught in terms of components, and so continuity of a vector-valued function just comes down to continuity of the individual functions that make up the components, right? Um, so the theorem here is that our vector-valued function, r of t, is going to be continuous if and only if its component functions are continuous. Simple enough. Um, so, for example, um, we could look at our previous r of t at, let's say, t equals 0 and t equals 1, right? All right, well, first thing we might notice is that r of 0, right, r of 0 is actually undefined, right? I can take the limit of sine t over t as t goes to 0. I know that that limit is 1, but I can't actually plug t equals 0 in. I cannot do it by direct substitution. I get 0 over 0. It's not defined, right? Um, so there, there's a removable discontinuity at that point. If I wanted to kind of modify this function, give you a piecewise defined vector-valued function, where I tell you that um, um, at 0, so I could tell you that r of 0 is equal to 1, 3, 1, and then and then it would be continuous. But as stated, it's, it's not defined, and that means that it can't be continuous at t equals 1, right? Um, but uh, r of 1, well, I can just plug t equals 1 in, right? I'm going to get uh, sine of 1. I'm going to get 1, and then I'm going to get uh, cosine of 1. And of course, that is exactly what I would get if I take the limit as t approaches 1 of r of t, right? If I was going to do that limit um, with t approaching 1, I can do it everywhere by direct substitution because each of these individual functions are continuous. And I mean, that's really what continuity means, right? You can evaluate, well, OK. It, in other scenarios, maybe continuity is much more subtle, but for the purposes of a calculus course like we're doing here, continuity really just means you can do the limit by direct substitution, right? So it's continuous at 1, but not at 0.